Hey guys, it's Jason from Premier Aviation HD. Just wanted to do a quick update video to uh, a video we did earlier in 2013 on a great free navigation uh, GPS application available on Google Play called Avair. Uh, that's A as in Alpha, V as in Victor, Alpha, Romeo, Echo. Uh, be sure to go to Google Play and download it. Now, still not available for the uh, um, iOS applications, you know, iPhone, and um, iPad, but it is available for Android, and uh, it's an amazing application, so just wanted to say thank you to those guys over there, the developers, uh, we really appreciate you, and uh, stay tuned to our channel for a in-flight demonstration of Avair as well, so, but just want to walk through a couple of the updates, the app has been updated, and it's got some really cool new features, so let's go ahead and click on it here. Uh, the very first thing it's going to bring up, obviously, the warning. Uh, you can die if you use this. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, make sure that you have a FAA certified GPS in your aircraft if you're relying on GPS for, nav for navigation. This should be a supplemental tool, and that's basically what this is talking about. So click on I understand. And um, let's go through, for those of you that haven't used the application yet, I'm going to go through a little bit of the way it's, it's laid out. It's really intuitive, the way they've got it designed, so um, it sh should be pretty easy to follow. Okay, so the first thing I want you to notice is the buttons down here above the navigation um, icons at the bottom. This one over here on the left is the menu, so that brings it up, preferences, download, and help on the left. Uh, it'll auto-hide, so go ahead and press it again over on the right, north up, navigate, and sectional. So um, I'm going to just go through what those are. Uh, the preferences, let's go in there. Um, you can change a lot of different options. I'm not going to go through each one, but uh, chart storage where you'd like your, your charts that you download to be stored, chart download server, short GPS update period, that's check, warn GPS enabled. I recommend checking that because in case uh, your GPS signal is lost, the app will warn you. So that's probably a good thing to check. Um, one of the cool updates is now you were getting in-flight weather. So um, AirMet and SigMet type, you can uh, change that option, translate weather, uh, keep screen on. That's a good thing. So that should probably be um, one that you check as well. Um, portrait mode, if you're using it in, on a tablet, that probably might be something to do. You can change the distance unit um, from nautical miles to statute miles. That's an option. Um, night mode, obstacles, that's good if you're flying in a congested area and, uh, you know, with uh, ground obstacles. And uh, the destination course line, uh, you can even change the icon to a helicopter icon if you're flying a uh, helo. So, um, pretty cool, but like I said, if you want to play around with that on your own time, go through those different options. So let's go back here, um, back into the menu. Um, download. This is going to be one of the first things that you're going to need to do, um, which is to download the the charts or the, the navigational aids for your area. Now it's got a lot of different things that you can update. Um, this is the weather, the current weather. This is a, this is a new one. Um, plates, so airport diagrams, VFR sectional charts, TAC charts, WAC charts, IFR, airfield images, terrain, uh, IFR en route charts, topographic maps, and Healy other charts. Those are some great, I mean, just a, a, a wealth of information. Now, you're not going to download everything. So in my case, because I'm, I'm currently a VFR pilot, I went into VFR sectional. And the one that I chose for my area, Dallas-Fort Worth, because I'm in Oklahoma, and Kansas City, because that includes my home city of Tulsa. Now, uh, basically, um, when you click on one, let's just choose one. So let's choose El Paso. Um, it's going to put this little get icon right next to it. Sorry, once this go ahead, uh, goes ahead and auto hide. There we go. Um, it's going to put the get icon right next to it there. So if, if I press get, now it's going to get the El Paso chart. Um, if it needs to be updated, this icon will change to the little red check mark, and you can just click update. Now, if you want to delete a chart that you've already downloaded, highlight it, press delete. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. So um, that's where you get your charts from. Uh, you're not going to have any charts preloaded, so you do have to choose those. 
Now the other side of the uh, of the menu, if you click that menu button again, you're going to notice it has north up. Uh, so if I if I put it on north, if it, it's it defaults to to north up. So that means the top of the chart is always going to be north. Um, if I tap it, it changes to track up. So whichever direction my airplane is headed, the 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 heading that I'm on uh, is going to be at the top of the screen. So that's the difference there. I'm just going to keep it on north up. Now, right now it's in navigate mode, and I'm sorry that keeps auto hiding. Uh, if I click navigate, um, it's going to change it to simulation mode. Now I'm just going to I'm going to demonstrate it in navigation mode as if I was actually in the airplane, but you can play around with the simulation on your own time. Um, at the bottom here on the right is the chart choosing uh, drop down. You can choose your, your chart from here. Uh, sectional chart, TAC, WAC, IFR, all the ones that we went through earlier um, when we were doing the download. Um, so right now I'm using, because I'm, I'm going to be simulating VFR flight, I'm using a sectional chart. So that's the one that we've chosen and that's why it's on our screen. Now one thing that I did want to show you that's really cool um, the default button down here in the bottom is pan. So wherever the plane is flying, uh, the chart's going to actually scroll around on the actual virtual sectional. So you don't have to constantly drag your finger across to do that. Um, now, if you if you click on pan, it changes to the word draw, and this is cool because it allows you to actually draw on the screen. So if you're getting an altimeter reading or uh, a clearance or, or or something like that. I'm not sure if you can see that it's in blue. You can just write that on the screen uh, when it's in draw mode. Now to clear that off your screen, just a long press and then press clear when it pops up. So we're going to default back to pan, but that's a great um, addition there. That's pretty cool that you can do that. Um, the other thing is if you do drag across and your aircraft is no longer centered on the chart, you can just go ahead and press the center icon here and it's going to bring that back to the middle of the screen. Now at the top um, is your GPS calculated elevation. That's not your uh, pressure altitude or any, anything like that. It's GPS uh, calculated elevation up here in the top left. This is going to be your speed, your GPS calculated speed in knots and this is your current heading. I'm sorry I keep pressing exit. Um, that's your current heading up in the right hand corner. Now that's going to um, that's going to come in handy when we have a destination that's been chosen. The other thing, um, because we were already talking about GPS calculation, if you click on GPS down here at the bottom, it will show you the number of GPS satellites that you're locked onto. So that's kind of cool for those advanced users that are just uh, curious as to um, how many how many GPS satellites you're tracking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plan our flight. So um, there's a couple of different ways to go. You can either create a flight plan, which we're going to do here in just a moment, or you can just choose a random destination or a destination that you need, um, I should say. Um, so I'm in. If you if you watched our other review, um, you'll know that our home airfield is is an airfield called Gundy's. It's a, a private strip. Uh, the FAA designation is Oscar 38. So if you know the FAA designation of the airport or airfield that you'd like to, 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 to go to, if you're in route or in flight, you can just go ahead and choose that by clicking Find. And then click on the uh, destination. If you'd already searched for it, you'll notice that the results are already there. But if, if I wanted to do that, um, if I hadn't already searched for it, I could just type in the search bar up at the top, Oscar 38 or whatever uh, FAA designation I'd like to go to and uh, get that information there. Um, so in this particular case, I'd already done that. So we're going to click on Oscar 38. Now, if I just tap it, it's going to say searching for Oscar 38 destination has been set. And if you'll notice, um, similar to previous versions, the approach path uh, indicators are there, those magenta lines. One cool um, uh, addition now is this uh, traffic pattern direction indicator, which is in blue. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. Um, that gives you the um, 
it, it's it's basically the direction of the base leg. So if you're on downwind here, this is your base. This is your this is your final. Uh, it gives you the direction of traffic for the runways that you're that you're wanting to use. Now, obviously, if if a tower gives you communication uh, and wants you to change that direction, um, they can do that. But this would be based off the published information for those runways. So for one seven and for three five, these are both left traffic. So. Um, and and that is that that is represented here, which is really cool. So um, again, uh, very similar to what it was before. Um, the 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 dotted red line in front of your aircraft indicator is your current heading. The black and white line is the fastest um, heading to your current destination. So if the, the the dotted red line is intersecting the black and white line. Um, then you are um, you're you're headed directly towards your uh, your destination the fastest route possible. Um, so that's good to know. Let's go ahead and clear out the destination I've currently have. So I don't want to go to Gundy's anymore. I want to go somewhere else. So I can just long press on the airfield. It's going to pop it up. It's going to say Oscar 38. It's going to tell you the chart that it's on. It's going to tell you uh, the direction and the heading. And it's going to give you the ability to get information about that airport. Uh, winds and temperature, um, the communication frequency. So if I click on that, there it is, 122.9. That's my uh, that's my Gundy's traffic in, um, uh, frequency. So if I, I don't want to go there anymore, let's go ahead and uh, press, press delete. But if I wanted to add that to a larger flight plan, at this point I can actually just press plan and it will add it to the flight plan, which will, uh, or sorry, flight plan which I'll show you here in just a moment. R right now I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Okay, so now I, I don't have a current destination. Recenter my aircraft. Now um, let's go ahead and create a uh, an actual flight plan. Uh, and we're going to do a couple of different airfields. So um, let's do it this way. Let's do it, um, uh, let's see, we're going to go near. Uh, if you want to know what airfields are near to you or closest to you, you can just press this near button. Now, if you'll notice, all the airfields are available. Um, it gives you the range to the airfield, the heading to the airfield. Uh, it also gives you the elevation of each one and what type of fuel is available at each one. So that if you if you need to refuel uh, in flight, you you know you realize that you need to refuel. Obviously, you should be planning better than that, but. If that was the case, you could find out where you could get some fuel uh, that would be compatible with your aircraft. Um, so let's choose uh, Tulsa International. We're going to long press and press TUL. Okay. So now I've I've changed my destination to uh, Tulsa International. Now I want to add this to a a flight plan. So I'm going to go ahead and long press on it and press plan. It's going to say TUL added to the plan. So now if I click on the plan button, I have one waypoint. That's TUL uh, and um, I can either activate that flight plan, I can save that flight plan. Right now it's inactive. So let's go ahead and add some other waypoints. Um, let's go ahead and add, let's just do it some with, through some searches that I've done previously. Let's do go ahead and do Sky took Municipal so I can long press. Remember earlier we just tapped to create a destination but we're going to long press and we're going to add to plan. Okay, so it's add it's added Sky took Municipal and let's go ahead and um, end up at Gundy's. So we're going to long press Gundy's this time and press plan. Okay, now if I go back to my plan You'll, you'll notice that I have Tulsa International, Sky Took Municipal, and Oscar 38 Gundy's as my three leg flight plan. Um, and it's got the distance to each one, the heading to each one from my current position. Um, and the total uh, of the, the, the distance between each, each, uh, each waypoint is 27 nautical miles total for my flight plan. So that's that's pretty awesome. And if I want to start my flight plan now, uh, my my heading needs to be uh, 33 degrees. So um, now, if I want to go ahead and activate this plan, I'm going to hit inactive. It's going to change to active. Now let's go back to the map. 
And if you'll notice, let's go ahead and scroll up here. From, from Tulsa International, um, I, if I wanted to intersect with the beginning of my flight plan, I would go ahead and fly to Tulsa International, and there's a pink line between each leg of my flight. So for, there's Tulsa International, Sky took Municipal, all the way down to Gundy's uh, for my end, uh, end destination. So there's, there's, there's my flight plan. Now if I want to change it up in flight, I can go ahead and uh, change the, the, um, the order, if you will. I want to go to Sky Took first and then go to, uh, to Tulsa International. So check this out. Click on this little icon on the left, drag it down, and there you go. Sky Took, Tulsa, Gundy's. Let's go ahead and activate it. Back to the map. And you'll notice the plan leg has changed. So now I'm going to Sky Took, then to Tulsa, then to Gundy's. And it gives me my approach uh, 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 corridor and my traffic pattern for my current um, for my current airport, the first way stop or the first waypoint, excuse me, in my flight plan, which is just awesome stuff. Now. Um, check this out. If I want to find out the weather uh, on my flight route, I can click this WX button. It says load a plan and press update to get the latest route weather. So we're going to go ahead and update. I already have a plan on file. And there's my METARs. There's KTUL. This is all current information. Current weather and um, it's got my PI reps, everything. So Everything you need to know about uh, current weather, of course, there's not a whole lot of radar information, but you still want to back up and get ATIS and all that, but um, that's all available to you at the touch of a button, which is just phenomenal stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and um, exit out of that. Um, that's the basics on how to go ahead and create a flight plan. Um, now, the other thing I'd like to show you is plates. Um, go ahead and click plate here. And it doesn't have any plates available for Skytook. Now, I do know that there are uh, plates available for Tulsa International. So let's go ahead and change that to our first waypoint in the plan. Remember, we just click on this icon. Uh, we can drag it. Actually, that was my little scroll bar here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and head back to the map. Just a moment. And activate my plan. Okay, there we go. So now uh, KTUL is now my uh, current destination. Now we do have plates for this airport. So check this out. I click on plate. Here's my airport diagram. Now this is GPS enabled. So if you're on a taxiway or you need to know where you are on an airport, uh, of course this needs to be an airport that has plates available for download. But um, you will show up, your aircraft will show up on the taxiway and it's just like a car uh GPS in that way. It's also got all the information. Uh, we've got hotspot diagrams. We've got ILS approach diagrams. We've got uh, GPS navigation uh, diagrams. There's all kinds of stuff for uh, a lot of these these, these larger airports, and uh, that to me is one of the coolest features of this application. The very last thing I wanted to show you guys was the A slash FD button. If you go ahead and click on that, um, remember our current destination is uh, Tulsa International. For whatever um, airport is your current destination, if you click on that A slash FD button, it's going to show you all the information about the airport that you could also pull up by long pressing, uh, but it's going to show you um, all the airport information in one convenient place. Uh, location ID, facility name, fuel types, contact number, unicom frequency, tower frequency, ground frequency, ATIS uh, frequency, all that stuff, um, runway dimensions, lengths, everything. So uh, make sure that um, you know you take full advantage of that. I mean, it literally has all the published uh, FAA information about the airport that you're going to, and that changes with each destination airport. Um, one other thing, uh, in addition, I know I said one other thing on this last one, but you can just choose a random spot. So let's just suppose I want to go to uh, the, the Keystone Dam, uh, which is out here by Lake Keystone. I'm just going to long press on that area. 
and you notice how it gives me a GPS coordinate. That's not a that's not a runway. That's not an airfield. That's just a, a, a GPS location. I can just add that as a destination, add it to my flight plan if I want to fly over something or fly close to something. Uh, you can do that. You add it to your plan or create a destination. Boom. It treats it just like you know any other waypoint, albeit not a uh, an airfield. So it doesn't have to be an airfield that you're going to. You can choose any spot, any location, any landmark that you'd like to fly close to, or uh, you know, of course, within your VFR minimums. But um, that's some you know just extra functionality which it was there before but I didn't get a chance to display it in the in the previous video so um, anyway guys always keep in mind um, uh, Aver uh, if you're if you need any type of GPS navigation uh, for your your airplane or your helicopter and to supplement your FA rated uh, GPS um, on a tablet you can use this on your Android phone I'm using it on a on just an S3 right now but I do have a Google uh, tablet uh, keep in mind, we are going to be be doing a, um, a in-flight demonstration of Avair. That's going to be posted on our YouTube channel. That's Premier Aviation HD. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment. Um, we have lots of good weekly content every week, um, and some uh, some great monthly content that we add. Um, viewer questions, gear reviews, all kinds of great stuff. So be sure to stop by and subscribe. We appreciate each and every one of you, and thanks again to the makers of Avair. Uh, we really do appreciate this application, and uh, we, we intend to use it for a long time to come. You guys have a great rest of your day.